Hi guys, bought one of these magic jellyfish today. In fact I bought two, one for my grandson and one for me to play with. They're based on, I believe the correct name is a Cartesian diver. And we used one, as I say, bought one for my grandson, and I was quite surprised that he actually had trouble crushing the bottle enough, or squeezing it enough, to make the jellyfish float and sink. So I'll just demonstrate a little modification that should make that easier for him to do. And then what I'll do is make one of my own because Thomas Kim did an excellent video on how to make one from a drinking straw uh, not all that long ago, so I'll put a link to his video as well. I filled the pop bottle with water. You fill it right up to the top or just underneath the top. I've popped my whatever he was called, magic jellyfish inside and I'll just demonstrate. It actually takes quite a lot of pressure to start him moving. Or at least not too much for me as an adult but it was quite a lot of pressure for my grandson to apply. I'm going to tie this round it, which is just a bit of um, ribbon. Put my wooden spoon through it and see if we can put enough pressure on it. twisting it. I think once the slack's been taken up, you should get the right idea. There we go. So that is quite easily done. And you've got the leverage. So, shame I haven't got my grandson with me, because then he'd be able to demonstrate. Obviously you can reposition that spoon so you've got a longer lever to do it with. The only thing I would say is don't overdo it and split the bottle. You're better off doing this in the kitchen sink. Right, I'll get a drinking straw and demonstrate Thomas Kim's version. Components need a drinking straw. I've got four here. We need some drawing pins. I've got various different sizes here. I've even got some map pins as they're called. And I've got some coloured drawing pins. So I think I'll make more than one just to see which goes best. You need some scissors just to cut the straw. You need something to hold the straw flat while you melt the end over, so I'm going to use this to melt the end of it, because you need to seal the top of the straw. So anything that you're able to use to melt it. I've got a pair of pliers here that I'm going to squash the end over. Thomas Kim uses a couple of um, pennies or coins anyway. So, let's try the first one. So that was just to seal the end of it. I 
let it cool down a bit before I let it go again. There we are. So that's sealed. We now need to cut it. I have no idea what length you need. It will be all to do with what weight you're going to use. So I'll just cut it half length. And I'll use the middle size drawing pins. And I'll pop it in the bottle and see if it works. So I'll need to move the camera again. Let's see how that goes. I think that might be too light if I shorten it a bit. Right, I've got some bigger drawing pins. That's better. I can do that with my hands quite easily, but for the benefit of my grandson, let's try it with the tourniquet. go. To make it interesting we've now got four different coloured Cartesian divers at the top here. There's actually two down at the bottom. One I didn't seal properly when I heated the end so that one sank and the other one I put too much weight on, so that one's at the bottom as well. <laughs> but the other four are all slightly different lengths, so they all move at different times, or different pressures. Looks like the shortest one is the first one to go down, and the last one to come up as well. Although that might be to do the weight on it as well. I haven't actually spent a lot of time checking that out. But that's a lovely simple toy to play with. And these don't need as much pressure as the shop bought one, so my grandson might be able to handle these easier. That one needs very little. So there you go, that's something different. With thanks to Thomas Kim and also whoever the manufacturer of that was.